Hi friends, today we're going to be making a camera controller for our player. Last time we made a character controller and now we just need to set the camera to follow the player and rotate around. Firstly, I'm going to drag my main camera to my camera holder that we made last time. And then I'll reset my position and rotation all to zero. So everything should be zero. And now you can see where the camera is placed. If you want the camera to be a bit higher, which we probably want, you can take the camera holder and lift him up a bit, maybe 0 0.0, or sorry, 0 0.12 or 1.3, maybe. Play around with it, see what you like. Let's go ahead into our scripts folder and create a new script called camera controller. Just so we don't forget, you can drag your camera controller onto the main camera and open up camera controller. Let's delete all the functions def by default. So we have an empty script. Okay, obviously we'll need some kind of variable for mouse sensitivity. So let's create a serialized field, private float mouse sensitivity. sensitivity. I think that's good. Then we'll need two transforms, one for the arms and one for the body. So I'll create two new transforms, private transform for arms, and then I'll create one for body. If you want to uh, duplicate a line like this, you can go to the end of the line and press Ctrl D and it will duplicate it. I'll explain why we need these in a moment. Now let's go to the update method, which is called each frame, private void update. And same as we had with our player controller, where we needed to get input like this, we'll need to do the same thing for our camera controller, but different input because we want to get the input from the mouse. So I'll create a float mouse X and I'll create a float mouse Y. Mouse X will be equal to input dot get axis and I'll get the mouse X axis. This is the left and right for the mouse. So whenever you move your mouse left or right, this value will change. And mouse Y will be up and down. So input that get axis and I want to get mouse Y. Make sure that you write this correctly. There needs to be a space in between. M has to be a capital and X and Y have to be capital as well. This will only return one or minus one and we want to multiply it with our mouse sensitivity so we can adjust the speed of the mouse. So times mouse sensitivity and we also want to multiply with time that delta time so it doesn't break if you have more or less frames. Same thing for the mouse Y. Before we continue I have to show you something. So the way the reason that we have two transforms and transforms are just these uh, objects or these components. So any object with these components can be a transform. So we'll need to rotate the arms and the body separately. So if we rotated the body uh, up and down, you can see what happens. And that's not a rotation you want for your FPS arms. You want something like this. So whenever we get input from the mouse up and down, we'll rotate our arms. And when whenever we get the input from our uh, mouse left and right will rotate the body and since the arms follow the body uh, they will get the rotation as well and the body will not get the up and down rotation because it doesn't follow the uh, arms hopefully that makes sense okay now we have the input but most cameras or most camera controllers in games have some kind of a clamping system so you can look behind yourself you can probably look just at the sky and not you know above that a way to do that is by adding a private float x rotation just like that and then in in the update method i'll say x rot minus equals mouse y if you said plus equals it would be inverted so that's why we're setting minus equals. So X rotation now will now just be equal to a negative number of mouse Y. And then we can say X rotation is equal to X rot, or sorry, mathf dot clamp. And this will just clamp a value between a minimum and a maximum. So we want to clamp X rotation between minus 90 
and 90. That's completely up and completely down. You can change these or even create them uh, into a variable and then change it in runtime. But this will just make sure that it clamps so we can't look behind ourselves or, you know, too, too low and then the camera flips around and everything gets broken. Let's actually do the rotation now. So let's first rotate the arms. So arms dot local rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler. And this is just a function that will rotate and it takes in a vector three. So I'll give it a new vector three and inside of it uh, for the X uh, rotation, I will give it X rot for the Y zero and for the Z zero. And for the body, I'll say body that rotate, which is a function that will rotate a transform. And it, again, it takes in a vector three. So I'll give it a new vector three for the X rotation zero for the uh, Y rotation mouse X and for the Z rotation zero. Now, why did I feed mouse X here uh, on the Y axis? Because Y axis, if you rotate around the Y axis, you're rotating left and right. And this is the left and right input. Same here. Uh, we're fitting mouse Y into X rotation because mouse Y is up and down and the X axis is the up and down axis when you think about rotation. It's a bit confusing, but just go with it. Now we can go into Unity. We just have to assign the variables. For the mouse sensitivity, I'll go for something like 350. You should probably go a bit lower. My mouse is a bit fucked up. For the arms, I'll drag in my arms like that, so the arms empty object. And for the body, I will drag in the player empty game object. If I click play, you can see that I can look left and right, and I can also, well, I can't look up and down. Why is that? Oh, my bad, completely. So uh, you shouldn't drag the arms in here, you should drag the arms pivot, because we also want to rotate our camera or our camera holder, not just the arms. So for the arms, drag in the arms pivot, my bad. Now click play and you can see we can look up and down, left and right and anywhere we want. And if you try to look down, you can see it stops you and up, it will also stop you. Good. But there's one thing that, that's annoying me and it's this mouse cursor. So we can make it whenever we uh, enter the game, mouse, curs mouse cursor hides and then we can unhide it whenever we want. Before we do that, let me just organize this again. So I'll create a new private void, handle mouse look. Just like that, I'll take all of this, copy it with control C, delete, paste into here, and I'll just give it handle mouse look in here. Same thing, just a lot cleaner. Okay, I'll create a couple new methods, well, two of them. So I'll create a private void, lock cursor, and I'll create a private void unlock cursor. In here, I'll say cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot locked. This will make it so it hides itself. And if you want to unlock it, you can go cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot none. Okay. And now whenever we enter the game. So private void start up here, I can say lock cursor. And we, we will not need to unlock it right now. But at one point, we'll probably use this. Okay, so now in the start method, it will lock it. So if you click play, you can see that the mouse is hidden now, if you click into the game view, and if you press escape on your keyboard, it unhides it, click again, and it uh, hides it back again. There's one problem. So if I walk backwards now, you can see I'm walking backwards. But if I look to the left and walk backwards, you can see that I'm walking left. And right is backwards now. That's because we're moving in local space and not in world space. A very simple fix for that is to go into your player controller. And right here where we uh, did our move direction in handle movement, you can say move direction is equal to transform dot transform direction. And you can see it transforms from local space to world space and it needs a vector three and we'll just give it move direction. 
just a quick fix for you. And now you should be able to walk forward wherever you're looking. So if I look there now and move forward, you can see that I'm moving there. If I look there, it's now it's there forward. So now it works properly. And now I can jump and look around and everything's nice and happy. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do in the next episode, probably add some animations to this. So join me then and thank you for watching. Bye bye.